Hi, this is Chantel, and I'm going to talk to you today about prehistoric art in this video, and then there will be a second short video on early civilization. And so we'll have those two videos. Um, so this one on prehistoric art, and I'll also get into some of the architecture as well. Prehistory really just means um, that which was created before the written word or before the written word as we recognize it. Um, some of these civilizations may have had forms of writing that we're just not recognizing as, as the written word. Um, but so essentially our history is based on writing. And so if there's no writing, that's before history starts. Uh, so it's kind of fascinating because we, um, we don't have answers on exactly why things were made and how they were made and their purpose. And so a lot of times we will then um, do our best to interpret and try to figure out why things are what they are. But many of those things, you know, we don't know for sure. And so we, we conjecture and we might be right or we may be far off base and it's hard to know because we can't ask the people who created the pieces. Um, so first section we're gonna talk about is Paleolithic, which is the old stone era. Um, goes from about 6 million to 10,000 BCE. BCE stands for Before Common Era, and in um, art history primarily, but also in a lot of other historical contexts, we use this term um, because the the for a long time we've used BC as as Before Christ and AD, and um, we historians recognized that a lot of cultures don't share the same religious beliefs um but in western his civilization where we tend to register off of that timeline and so this is you know bce is before common era um and then ce is common era so um right now our um we're in 2019 common era and uh, so that's off of the calendar that we generally use. All right, so that said, Paleolithic, 6 million to about 10,000 BCE, we see the emergence of tools and weapons and um, the existence of a lot of cave paintings, which are, are quite artistically fascinating, I think. Um, let's look first at the Venus of Willendorf, probably the most famous sculpture of this era um there were actually many of them this is this is a very specific one um the venus that was found in willendorf germany um dates to about twenty five thousand to twenty thousand bce this is uh three different views of the same figurine um she stands about four and a half inches tall and is made of stone there were many of these figurines found uh, throughout Germany and around Europe. And they all have very similar characteristics. Uh, they have this kind of, of nubby head that doesn't have facial features. It's just, you know, a kind of a head symbol. Um, the Venus figurines that were found um, tend to be very, very round and heavy set. Um, the focus tends to be on, you know, the fact that it's, it's nude and, um, you know, they tend to have large breasts and, um, you can see like the hands and feet are almost non-existent. Um, in this one, the feet are gone, um, but the hands are just barely there, um, really de-emphasized. So because this figure is nude and and um heavy 
a lot of historians have decided that it must be a fertility symbol or used in fertility rituals, um, ceremonial practices. But when it comes down to it, we really don't know. Um, you know, it's, it's fascinating that there were so many of these female figurines. Um, they haven't found any male figurines of, of the same era. Um, but again, we don't know if they were used in religious ceremonies or if they were just toys. You know, I sometimes think to myself, what if thousands and thousands of years from now, people came across Barbie dolls and tried to figure out their purpose? Um, that they might decide that they were fertility figurines as well, um, when actually they were just toys. So we don't really know about the Venus but of Willendorf, um, but it's a pretty fascinating figure and suggests, you know, maybe um, some focus on matriarchy. Um, but again, we can't ask them and we don't know for sure. The Lascaux Caves in France. Um, these caves, we've dated them back to about 15,000 to about 10,000 BCE. Um, and more recently, they uh, discovered some caves in Chauvet, France as well, with this wonderful uh, painting style inside. These caves, um, the paintings were preserved over the years because they have not been in a whole lot. Um, people haven't haven't damaged them um, and so they were very well preserved all these years um, they're pretty fascinating I've linked some videos uh, to to the site about this um, both a virtual tour of Lascaux cave and um, another one showing about the the caves and what they've done is there's actually, they built a replica cave next to the actual cave at Lascaux because they discovered that because people were going into the caves to look at them and breathing and introducing lights into the space and everything that was starting to do damage to the cave itself. So they created an, an exact reproduction uh, next door that you can go into. Um, but these are pretty fascinating, you know, the, the, the room after room. And I think you'll see this in the virtual tour. They're, they're so expansive. But if you look at all these sculpt, all these paintings um, throughout of all these animals, and they're, they're really quite fascinating. Um, and to try and figure out what they mean. Are they uh, a record? Um, are they you know, part of a ceremony in, in hoping for a good hunt? Um, is it just an artistic expression, um, you know, recording things that, that the artists have seen in their life? Um, I like, you know, the layering here of an animal over an animal. Um, and you can see hints and suggestions of former animals back here. Uh, they're, they're, quite exquisitely done. And it's also interesting to contemplate how they were made. Um, here's some more and we see some, some antlered and some horses. And it's also an interesting record of the animals that were around um, that these people experienced. Looking at the Mesolithic period, which is traditional stone about 10,000 to 8,000 BCE, and the Neolithic, the new stone era from about 8,000 to 2,000 BCE, um, we see some more of these female figurines. These are um, from the Cuclitic Islands off of Greece, and there were hundreds of these discovered. Um, and so these are all called Cuclitic figurines. Um, and they divided them into sections. So this is from the Cuclitic II era, from about 2600 to 2400 BCE. The one here on your left, as you're looking at it, this figuring is about 24 inches tall. Um, but you can see they range in sizes. These ones are about 12 inches tall, going all the way up to, you know, three, four feet tall. You can see that they all have, have similar characteristics. Um, these ones all have these flat faces 
um, with just the nose and the face is upturned slightly. Um, very long necks, very thin um, and angular. Uh, the arms crossed over over the belly. Uh, yeah, and they look very much like a, a modern art sculpture to me. They're very fascinating, I think. Um, again, we don't know exactly what they were for, why they existed. Um, and also we don't know what they may have looked like if they were color or if they were, um, you know, just plain. We tend to see them as, as just plain, as we do, will um, a lot of our Greek and Roman pieces, but we have since discovered, you know, pieces of paint on them. Um, so this is a more modern Cuphletic one. You can see here these figures, um, unlike the, the last group that all appeared to have female characteristics, these ones, it's a little harder to tell if they're male or female. Um, and then this one is a slightly later one that you can see is a little less stylized, um, actually has eyes and a mouth and ears, unlike the counterpart over here. Um, is playing an instrument and has a little more dimensionality to it. There are many of these examples of early architecture, these dolmen sites. This one comes from about uh, 9000 BCE. And these have, um, there's an architectural structure here made of posts and lentils, creating um, doorways and openings. And you can see that it's got a stone structure inside and then um, earth is mounted over the top. And so there are these huge hills. There are these dolmen sites found throughout Europe and also in the Americas. Um, and they're, they're quite fascinating. Some of them um, have, have seem to be burial chambers. Um, and many of them have a variety of, of items inside. As near as we can tell, they were for burial, but we don't know for sure. Um, but they're fascinating architectural structures, um, very early examples of architecture. And then we have here Stonehenge. Um, oops, went forward one. Uh, it's the most famous of the henges. However, there are henges similar to this throughout um, Britain. And I think a few have been found elsewhere in Europe. Uh, they have these huge monolithic structures, again, posts and lentils. This is one, um, so Stonehenge was in uh, Salisbury Plain, England. Uh, dates from about 3000 to 1800 BCE. This is huge. The diameter is 97 feet and the tallest upright at Stonehenge is 22 feet. Um, they, again, we don't know exactly why that was built, why this, the various henges were built. Um, Stonehenge has many bodies uh, buried around the perimeter. So they suspect that, you know, maybe there was, was uh, some burial um, areas around some, but then some people say, you know, there were human sacrifices or maybe it was just a sacred space. Um, but it is fascinating because the, the sun lines up uh, very specifically at both the uh, summer and winter equinoxes, I mean, uh, solstices. And so it seems to have some significance there, but it's hard to know for sure. And here's another view of Stonehenge. And here's an example of some of the bronze tools that would have been used in this period. These are bronze tools from 4,000 and uh, really quite beautifully made and also made it possible to create a lot of the pieces that we have. Um, okay, so that ends this video and then you'll probably wanna just move on to the one on early civilization. Um, all right, thank you very much.